Beirut Hatzel album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album uh, from New Mexico-based indie folk project headed by Mr. Zach Condon, who in the early days of this band... Wow, like I, I was completely head over heels with the band's sound. Their 2006 debut, Gulag Orchestra, uh, it is one of the most beautiful folk albums I, I think that I've ever heard, honestly. I mean, there is such an old world beauty to these recordings that still just choke me up. Like even when I was re-listening to it a few weeks ago, it brought a damn tear to my eye. A lot of the same feelings on their follow-up, The Flying Club Cup. Uh, I cannot stress enough just how incredibly gorgeous these records are. And if you haven't listened to them yet and you're a fan of modern folk, it, it's something to check out. However, with their next few releases, I started enjoying the music of Beirut uh, a little bit less and less. Like The Riptide, their follow-up album. I thought this album started off great with some of their best tracks ever, like A Candle's Fire, awesome tune. But as the album progressed and the band's production got shinier and more, I don't know, modern sounding, uh, I just felt less and less attached. The band continued to just, I don't know, feel less and less attached to me uh, with their follow-up album, No, No, No. I mean, I heard tracks like Gibraltar and I was like, yeah, let's go. Still an awesome tune. But by the end of the album, I was screaming No, No, No. And their last album, Gallipoli, is such a tragically boring record. It was one of the first albums that I reviewed when I switched over to YouTube a few years ago. And we haven't heard from them since 2019, at least in the studio album, New Music Capacity. Uh, they did put out that Artifacts compilation, which I, I really wanted to chat about because I thought there was some great stuff on there. But th that thing was long, man. However, leading up to this album, I personally was really impressed with both of the singles, and the reality is, while not maybe as good as their early stuff, uh, I, I would be absolutely lying through my teeth if I said that I haven't been this into a record from Beirut since, like, the Riptide. Hatzel starts this album off, and moments in, I'm back in the band's good graces. This intro is instantly better than anything on their last two studio albums. Now, times have changed for the band. They are still a very much more polished sounding band from their early days. Which does sound a little suspect on paper, but I will say that Zach's vocals on this track, and for a lot of this album, bring that fiery passion back. I love the sweet horns and the layered vocals that we get. It's just so sweet and warm. My heart is happy listening to this track. Arctic Forest, on the other hand, is surprisingly immersive for the band. The production on this track specifically is it's unbelievable, honestly. It helps the already very warm rhythms of this track really pop hard. Now, Beirut have never been the flashiest band, and this is no different. This track definitely takes its time, builds very slowly, but I actually really love how this track builds up around Zach just swirling around him so lovingly. It's so sweet. It's just so incredibly sweet. And when the brash and the percussion eventually make their way in, things get even sweeter. I love this. It may be my favorite deep cut here. So Many Plans has done nothing but grow on me since it dropped. It is just so good. This is a sweet ballad just full of love and harmony and everything in between. This really does bring me back to the band's best work. This has all the charm of their early days, but at the same time, uh, the shinier production actually adds more than it detracts, which is something I've never been able to say with Beirut. It's just so tender, and Zach's vocals here, I mean, mwah. The horns that pop in behind him are super classy. This is just stunning. And Melbu is one of the most stripped down and truly stark moments here. It's all instrumental, which I was worried would kind of get on my nerves uh, on an album like this, but I actually think it adds a lot. It's a really great atmospheric track, which is a sheer beauty to it that I just can't explain. It's simple, but it really does bring people together. So, to an extent, Beirut definitely are back in my good graces. However, we are not out of the woods just yet, friends. Like Bayon, early on in the album. Also, um, if I mispronounce anything, I, I am very sorry, but yeah. I mean, I don't mind the drum machine to an extent when it comes to Beirut's music. In a weird way, it's become kind of a staple of what they do. But everything else needs to step up around it, which does not happen on this track. This is flimsy. This is way too light. I mean, if a slight breeze picked up, this track would blow away. I have nothing to say about this track. Just remember, it's a slippery slope. I mean, the horns that pop in eventually do help a little, but it's not enough. Stoke Markness, on the other hand, 
It's genuinely my nightmare. This track is my nightmare. Like I said earlier, the, the band has changed over the years. This is far from the dusty, very rustic, charming, old-school beauty of their early records. But here, there's just a lot more annoyances. Between the drum machine and the synths just floating through this track, it's aggravating as hell. Nothing about this track sounds organic to me outside of Zach's vocals, but, you know, he, even he can't fix this track. January 18th, I hate to say it, but I really do not love tracks like this. Things go from serene and heartfelt to genuinely goofy in a heartbeat, and that's tragic. Oh my god, the synths on this track are so unbearably annoying, and then everything else falls apart around it. Uh, this instrumental is just no good. Zach actually sounds just fine. Like, he sounds just fine, but everything else needs to pick up. Also, this, sorry, not even gonna give it a chance. I'm not gonna embarrass myself. From a distance, this sounds very obvious. This sounds like an old-school Zach Condon ballad, but I am baffled by how little this track progresses. Uh, so, yeah, we're not out of the woods just yet. But we are in the right direction for sure, and Beirut, like I said, are back in my good graces. Island Life, I thought I would absolutely hate this track. It's very stripped down, it's very warm, love the ukulele here. I just felt like from a distance a lot of these elements didn't add up, the drum machine really does sound a little out of place here, but it actually works mostly because of the sweet vocals and even, even sweeter lyrics are just so full of love, it's a great track. A lot of the same feelings on Spillhaugen, this track did take a little while to turn around on me, uh, but this is sort of hazy kaleidoscopic jam that I didn't know Beirut had in them. Between the layers of colorful synths and Zach's incredible vocal performance, they blend together really well in a way that I didn't see coming. It's incredibly sunny and very inviting in a weird way. This is the modern sound of Beirut that I want to hear more of. The turn is beautiful. I've loved it since it dropped as a single. Surprisingly beautiful. And I do say surprisingly because I honest to God didn't think that a track with so much drum machine and it could be this tear-jerkingly gorgeous. But it comes off very meditative, this very bare bones instrumental and sax vocals. It's haunting as hell. It really grows nicely as each instrumental pops in. It's beautiful and regulatory as a finale is gorgeous. It's one of the more synthetic and less organic sounding tracks here, but it is still very warm and inviting. And no joke, we get maybe my favorite Zach Condon performance on this entire record here. It is absolutely beautiful and mesmerizing. His vocals are stellar. Yeah, not a bad album from Beirut, especially with where they've been and how disappointed I've been with their studio material since, like, before the Riptide came out. Are we out of the woods yet? No. Do I still have a lot of issues with the cleanlier production? You're damn right I do. But for a collection of very charming, very inviting, and just genuinely beautiful folk tracks, look no further than this new Beirut album. It's just fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm feeling a very light seven on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.